Welcome to the Financial Foundations Podcast, your gateway to the fascinating realm of finance, brought to you by Base Wealth Management. In this show, we delve deep into the world of money, guided by seasoned experts who will unravel the complexities of finance and provide you with invaluable insights and practical advice. Now, here are your hosts, Dustin Taylor and Alex Wolf. Welcome back to the Financial Foundations Podcast, brought to you by Base Wealth Management, where we are the foundation to your financial plan. I'm your host, Dustin Taylor. I'm your co-host, Alex Wolf, Certified Financial Planner. And today we have a question from Richard, who says that he is getting closer to retirement and he's been thinking about withdrawal strategies lately. He's seen a lot about the 4% rule and how that might not be the gold standard that it once was. And so today we're going to dive into the 4% rule and maybe offer some insights and alternatives to that rule. Alex, can you explain to us what the 4% rule is? Yeah, so the 4% rule was designed a while ago as a way for retirees to easily understand how much money they could withdraw from their portfolio on an annual basis without depleting their principal enough during retirement to run out of money. The classic example is if you had a million dollar portfolio, and the 4% rule, you could take out $40,000 per year and theoretically never run out of money, and it would last you uh, during your retirement years. How long does that typically last? In the you know, original example, it would last you somewhere between 20 to 25 years withdrawing on that 4%. Okay, and I think that alludes to some of the problems with it, but let's just take it a bit further here. What exactly would you say are the top issues with the 4% rule now? The biggest issues are people are living longer, so there's longevity risk, and market return assumptions and actual returns are much different, especially for fixed income and bonds. The interest rates on bonds, which you would consider like your safer money in your you know perfectly allocated portfolio, are much lower now than they were 20 years ago when this first started coming up. How do market losses affect the 4% rule? This is, to me, one of the biggest concerns of the 4% rule, not necessarily longevity, which is an issue, but it's the sequence of negative returns, where if you have a period of several years of negative market returns, and you think you're still going to withdraw $40,000 per year, that 4% is going to be a lower number and some people don't adjust their spending accordingly and if that happens over several years you are withdrawing when your portfolio is at its weakest and won't have a long enough runway to recover so it takes longer for that money to rebuild itself that definitely makes sense when you think about how you withdraw money on an annual basis now i want to shift into bond rates and how that is related to the 4% rule. Bond interest rates today are lower than in the original 4% rule study. How does this affect the rule's applicability? Would you have your money invested into you know, a model allocation, whether you have it in 80% stock, 20% bonds, or 70-30, 60-40, any way you mix your investments into that your bond returns, as those interest rates are much lower now, as you mentioned, than they were when this study was first published, by all, more than half. Like returns back then on bonds were as high as 8 to 10%, and now you're lucky to get 2 3 or 4% on those bond interest rates. So that's considered your safe money, and when your safe money is returning less, you're more susceptible to market volatility on your other investments invested in the stocks. And while your safe investments are giving you even a 4% return to hedge on the downside. So interest rates being much lower is potentially catastrophic in making that money last as long as it needs to utilizing just the basic 4% rule. And when it comes to inflation, like in 2022, there was a 9% inflation rate. What is its impact on the stocks and bonds? Specifically in the bond market, when you think about 
a high inflationary period, if your bond's giving you 3% and inflation's over double that, you're essentially making no money or having a negative return on your fixed income. Also, those returns on equities don't look quite as good, even when you factor in like a 12% return in some cases on you know, the tech stocks during this time period that have done really well. When you think about a 9% inflation rate, your money just doesn't go as far. So you may need more than 4% during this time period, which is going to have a snowball effect. So in your opinion, why is the 4% rule too rigid to handle things like inflation, market returns, interest rates, and taxes effectively? When you think about each of those categories, you need a plan and a withdrawal strategy that can adapt to changes in market returns, inflation, changes in interest rates. Because when you think about the changes in your lifestyle and the cost of goods during a high inflationary environment, you may need more money, but you want to build in parameters or guardrails that you have in place to keep you from overspending during especially volatile times when the market's down, but also in the good times, you may want to curtail your spending in case the market drops. How does spending in retirement typically affect someone's withdrawal strategy? When you examine a typical retiree, and we work with hundreds, their spending habits or pattern typically looks like a smiley face, meaning they spend more money during the early stages of retirement, and then you go through a a phase where you're slowing down, you're not traveling as much, but you're still independently living in your home, and maybe you've already paid off your mortgage. So your expenses start to decrease, and you're getting a little less active. And then as you get older, it starts to pick back up again. Maybe you uh, are spending more on healthcare. Maybe you have helpers coming into your house, or you go full on assisted or retirement living, which can be costly. And in that situation, toward the end of your life, expenses may kick back up and you're going to want to make sure that you have the proper withdrawal strategy in place to assist you with that increase and decrease and then an increase again in your need for income. And how does the 4% not hold up during that typical situation? What's the problem with it? So if you're trying to accomplish all the things that you want to do at the early part of your retirement, if you're active and traveling, you might be inclined to overdraw on that 4%. So in that situation or example, when you had the million dollars in 4% in that first year is 40,000, you might factor in getting $40,000 per year, even when the market drops in that $40,000 withdrawal, all of a sudden becomes 6% of the portfolio, not 4%. And then when you go through those slow years where you're spending less, you might still be taking the same amount out of your accounts, but not necessarily spending it all, but you're depleting your investable assets. So it sounds like in the a little bit of information we've covered so far that the 4% rule may not be as relevant anymore. What would you say are some other examples? And you kind of alluded to one earlier, but what are some other sort of solutions or withdrawal strategies that people should consider or ask their financial planner about? Everyone's going to be a unique case. So first and foremost, I recommend they meet with a financial planner who can sit down and examine their personal situation and take into account things like where are your guaranteed sources of income? Do you have a pension? you have social security? How much of your money is in retirement accounts versus taxable accounts? So that way they can help customize a withdrawal strategy that's going to work for you and that will be better suited for this couple or individual during their retirement years and also factoring in taxes. So one thing that people don't always understand is, how their tax situation is affected based on their withdrawal strategy. And does it make more sense to do things like Roth conversions before retirement or in retirement, pre-RMD age, things like that, that may help save them taxes, ultimately giving them more money in their pocket versus just 
doing a straight 4% from their 401k or IRA every year. And no matter what the market returns are, you know, some people just take $5,000 out of their retirement account every month, first day of the month, no matter what's going on. And and that might work for people that have big nest eggs saved up, but it, it may not work for everybody. So I know with all of these pieces of retirement planning, I mean, you have to think about RMDs, withdrawal strategies, social security, tax implications, everything. It can seem overwhelming. But one action item that we can definitely give you, I think, is to step one, talk to your financial planner. And in this case, if you're interested in the withdrawal strategy, ask your financial planner if he can explain to you the guardrails approach and if it makes sense for you or if a different type of strategy makes sense. But step one is definitely to talk to your financial advisor or financial planner. Thanks to Richard for asking that question. I have also seen a lot about the 4% rule lately, and it's very interesting to dive into what might be wrong with it. If you'd like more information on various financial topics, including retirement planning, you can visit our website at basewealthmanagement.com. You can also submit your questions to us like we had from Richard today. You can send those questions or comments to us at question at basewealthmanagement.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite listening app. I'm Dustin Taylor. I'm Alex Wolf. And happy listening. We hope the expertise shared by our hosts, Dustin Taylor and Alex Wolf, has left you feeling empowered and informed. If you're eager for more financial wisdom, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the show with your friends, family, and colleagues. Until next time, stay sharp in the world of finance.